So my name's Deepti Patel Mishra. I'm the Chief Data and Analytics Officer. I actually, um, you know, have been in healthcare analytics for almost 18 years now. Started off, uh, you know, before analytics was one of the niche things to do, or even people knew what it meant in healthcare. Um, at Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina, transition from there to uh, SaaS, uh, you know, SaaS software, and went on to CEP America. And I'm very mission driven. I think if I could make a little impact in healthcare, I would die a happy person. Because healthcare impacts all of us. And so that's one of the big reasons I, you know, not only come to this conference, but I'm very passionate to learn how do we all collectively put our knowledge together to change healthcare for the future. I'm a trained chemist, uh, so I have a PhD in chemistry from Johns Hopkins. And part of what I wanted to do actually was uh, teach. You know, I was passionate about teaching and um, really wanted to make an impact in, you know, uh, at least future education. Um, had kids and realized there is no substitute teaching in college. So when your child is sick, you make a very tough decision. Um, it took some time off. Actually, I was a stay-at-home mom for five years. So for everybody out there who's trying to figure out, you know, how to balance, um, very early on, I figured, you know, if today was my last day on earth, I actually wanted to be fulfilled more as a mother than as a rock star scientist. So made that decision to actually be at home, uh, raised our kids, and after five years went in, um, back into the career, and actually got my MBA, um, went into uh, finance and was a real estate investment banker before moving on to healthcare and Blue Cross, and that's where the healthcare journey started. Data analytics in all fields has been pretty much on top of everybody's conversations, right? This is the time, at least in 2017, when folks are talking more in terms of what is the impact. It's not about data scientists. I call it learning to dance with the business users. That's where I think the focus has been, because initially it used to be, here's data analytics, the black box, and here are the business users, and two shall not meet. And I, unless you want bruised feet, I think you need to learn to dance very nicely and very quickly. Because it is that give and take, and it is the listening and hearing. Um, I could create a phenomenal data model, but if it's not utilized, it's a useless data model. And so that push and pull, that learning to tango, I call it, is very critical. And that's probably where 2017, at least in everything I've seen, experienced, and really want to try and push for, I think it's going to come to the forefront even in 2018 and beyond. It's the how do we combine these two things together. You know, there is data, right? There is the information, you know, out there. There are the internet of things. You know, we are collecting data. At the same time, privacy has been on the forefront. Uh, you know, folks have seen the ransomware. Um, you know, healthcare has been as prone as uh, Equifax was, I think. So there is the part of trying to balance, right? You want to make sure things are secure. The best security is don't let anybody touch the data then there's no analytics to be had. So it's a balance of how do you keep things secure at the same time utilized to build a model that then can be actually utilized to have an action. So I think that in all, you know, if you looked at the entire, you know, cradle to grave of a data analytics, it's all about the fine balance, whether it's in relationship, in privacy security, in building the models, in time, in delivery, Right? It's all of this, it's a fine balance that everyone is just walking you know, on that journey. So healthcare in general has been more compliant, more secure. I think um, all the individuals who've been working with healthcare data probably have this, um, almost a training that they've gone through. Because without having this, you're not going to work with healthcare data. If I was to look back and say, you know, with all of the breaches, what has happened is the rest of the organization has been more aware. So if you take out the pocket of people who worked with healthcare data, they are probably, you know, we're the champions to begin with, right? It's always the question of I can't email you this file or I can't leave something out there. And I think what has happened is the importance and the need for and why, you know, there is this barrier of where data sits and resides and who sees it. I think the rest of the organization has come up to speed. At the same time, the reverse also has happened. I know there are a lot of organizations that are 
you know, the security privacy drives most of the conversations and they lag behind in the data building, right? So the question then becomes, you know, for some organizations, how do you really come up to speed with what's great access, what's great security, what's privacy at the same time of making sure that you're building things that can actually make a, you know, impact in the patient care. So that's the balance. I think both organizations are trying to figure out what's the right mix for them. We all are patients, right? No data analytics is needed to tell you that the hospital gown is one of my most annoying garments that you will ever see, right? But nobody makes an effort to change it. You know why? Because it's easy for the folks who are going to give, provide treatment. Easy access. So part of data analytics that is going to evolve over time, because we talk about it, right, from the part of its patient-centric, it's driven for the patient. I think when we start to look at it from all perspectives, you know, the clinicians, the patients, the care providers for the patient, you know, whether it is in driving, whether it's in picking up the medication, whether it is in listening to the discharge notes and making sure that the patient adheres to it. All of this, I think we're going to come to a place in healthcare at least, where it's not about just the interaction that the physician has with the patient. It's a more holistic care in terms of technology, relationships, care that is provided inside and outside, and overall well-being, you know, mental, physical, emotional. I think we haven't, we treat them all separately right now. So CEP America actually is one of, uh, you know, the physician staffing, which is in the acute care spectrum. We are completely a physician partnership. So it's not a for-profit model, it's not venture capital back. The goal and the mission for CEP America is all about the patient. And comes back to this, right? Because it's the physicians who are taking care, they want to make sure that every analytic tool that we build is for them to impact patient care. So we come back to, you know, your question in terms of, okay, can you put in and say this patient is at a high risk, let's just say for readmission or for some condition. It's just not enough for our physicians to be told here is a, you know, a risk percent or a chance of somebody, you know, coming back to the um, you know, hospital again. They really want to know, so what? What can I do with this? So in real time, when I am interacting with the patient, what information can you give me so I can then either reduce the chance, you know, of say a heart attack, or reduce readmission, or reduce the revisit? You know, what can I do? Because I have the 30 minutes with the patient right now, or sometimes in the emergency department even less. Right? We call it a patient needs prediction tool, right? So rather than just telling me that are high risk, tell me there are high risk because of these conditions or these reasons. So it lets me do something. So absolutely, our physicians are going to be the ones who are going to utilize and, and drive change. Um, data is just going to be an enabler. Uh, the best thing about what I do, really, is, um, you know, and I may never know the patient, and I really never want to know the patient in most scenarios, right? I, I get a satisfaction when our physicians come back and say, you know, that model that you guys built, or this information that you gave, or this tool you created, or the solution you provided has impacted the patient in this way at my shift that I was doing yesterday. Um, I really, truly believe that, you know, all of us together, even if we make a, a tiny bit of difference in healthcare together, we can actually change how healthcare is perceived in the next few years. That gets me going every morning. I'm making a difference in a patient's life, and what more do you need? In terms of data analytics making things simple, I, I'll go back to an example, right? And if you see, you know, more recently, right, um, go out and look at all the little kids, the toddlers, even the babies, right? The parents, to keep them engaged, are giving them their, you know, smartphones or tablets or iPads, right? Kids have no training. There is no how to use the iPad, right? It's intuitive and they're able to use it. And I think when we take our data analytics and what it tells us and the models and solutions and make it as user friendly, where even a toddler, when they pick it up, they're like, I know what to do. I think that's the perfect magic. 
So if you were to ask me where, you know, yes, I think there is a potential, you know, for healthcare analytics to partner with whether it's technology, whether it's different vendors to create that magic, that magic that says it doesn't have to be hard. Although we had years of training, it's actually a very simple thing. I think the most painful lesson is you could create some great tools and solutions, but if they are not adopted or you don't manage expectations or you haven't engaged the users early on, it's a useless tool and solution. It'll sit on the shelf because it probably wasn't at the right time, the right solution in the right person's hand, it's not gonna make an impact. So looking back, if you were to say, you know, look back and what was the aha moment? The aha moment was you don't have to create something complex. You've just got to create something together.